Well, hello everyone. I just want to show you a uh, new development on the power coming off the coil. If you saw the other videos of the power ratings on the coil, you'll see that uh, I powered an automotive bulb. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. However, um, we've got an array of those bolts that you can see here. And uh, this is the wiring configuration of them. It's going through a switch. And each one is switched independently so that I can show you the uh, differences in those loads. And so that's, that's what that's going to be. That's going to sit right here on our tabletop. And then our amp meter... The one side is going to come into our connection here, and the other side is going to come directly off of our DC output of our coil, which is through this wire here. And then we're going to get our voltage reading off of this meter for our DC. This is going to be our amp reading, and then I'm going to show you the AC voltage on both sides of the coil on this meter as well, and we'll test that independently. But uh, that's going to be the setup for that, and I'm going to show you how uh, each one of the bulbs light up, um, and also the volt rating coming off of that, and also the amp rating when all of these are on, so we're maxing out the draw amps off of our coil. Okay, so what you can see here is I've wired it up. This is our connection coming off of our coil. This is coming off of our amp meter, and then I'll go ahead and turn the meters on, and uh, I'll show you the, the bulbs in glowing. Um, this wire, again, just comes off of our negative on our bridge rectifier, and then we have our uh, power coming in through our amp meter going to the load so that we can read the amps, and that's coming off the positive side of our bridge rectifier as well. And uh, I'll show you the other connections at the end of the video as well, and so you'll be able to see the power output. Okay, so our DC voltage is 25, and it'll increase all the way up to about 27 volts. Um, after it comes up to running temperature, you'll watch this slowly start to climb. Um, our amperage right now, if I turn this on amps, it's set on DC amps. You'll see that there's no amps because none of our bolts are on. So I'm going to show you one at a time as the bolts come on. And uh, then we'll be able to see the readings, and then I'll shut off the lights so you can just see the glow of the bulb, so that you can see what that's doing. Alright, so here's our first one, and go ahead and watch the draw on the amps. So that's our one bulb. I know it's pretty bright. And you'll notice that we're drawing one amp off the coil and 15 volts right now. So I'll go ahead and turn on the next light. And you'll notice that we're drawing an amp and a half, just about an amp and a half. And we dropped it down to nine volts. So when I engage three lights, you'll see that we're drawing 1.6 amps. And we've dropped it down to about five volts. With our next light, so we have four in a chain, we're drawing 1.738 amps, and it dropped it down to three volts. Turning on our fourth, you'll see that we're drawing 1.73 amps, and a little over a volt, almost two volts. And when I turn on the third, that's going to max out our coil as far as the amperage. Um, our volts is at 1.2, and so our amperage is uh, 1.789. So what I'm going to do is turn out the lights now so that you can watch the glow in the bulb so you can see how that steps back up. So I'm going to go ahead and start switching these on. I don't know if you can see the glow in these bulbs, but all of them are just barely glowing. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But I'll go ahead and flip our first one off, and you'll be able to see those five start to glow. And then I'll switch off the next one, and you'll see those four. The next one, you'll see those three. 
The next one you'll see the two. Now at this, this voltage here, we're pushing these bulbs as much as what an automobile will uh, coming off of the vehicle. And when I flip this one off to this one, uh, it's overdriving that bulb because of our voltage and amperage that it's able to draw. So you can see it's quite bright. It lights up the entire room that I'm in, uh, just like you would a normal light bulb. So we're doing some pretty good things here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this light back on so you can see the meters. And you'll see that we're drawing almost 16 volts and over an amp on our meters. Now with this one running, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these back on. So we're getting our maximum draw. And I'm going to turn all of our lights back on. So that you can see our table. Okay, so on our amperage here, remember we're drawing a full load off of our coil, so we're maxing out our coil. And you'll see that we're producing 2.9 volts coming off of our AC still on our large wire. On our small wire, we're producing 2.8 volts, so they should be about the same. And as far as our amps, on each one, you're going to be drawing about the same as the DC. Now, as I turn these back off, what you're going to see is these four volts are glowing now. You'll see that our voltage is 1.7 on our DC. And on our AC, you'll see that we're producing 3.5 on our large wire, 3.5, 3.6 on our small wire. And as I decrease the load so it's more an optimum running, you'll say that now we're producing 4.7 on both sides again. Turn off our next one. And you'll watch our DC voltage go up as well. 6.9. 6.9. Now you'll watch here again. 11 and 11 18.7 18.8 and when I kill it so that it's a no load 28.5 and 28.6, 28.7 in that range. So in the dynamics, what I want to do is show you that bulb, Sylvania 1003, and that's just a standard DC automotive bulb. The configuration is the same as what we used before, I have just enhanced the coil just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to show you the wire connection so that you can see that. So what we have here is a parallel wiring configuration from our two coils. And that's paired. It comes into our screw block. That runs over to our bridge rectifier where I rectify everything at once. And then it comes out into our terminals that we have running to our two different meters. So with that being said, you can see the output of our coil has been increased by two compared to our other video. And uh, that's one of the things that I uh, wanted to cover was it is possible to increase the total overall output of a coil without changing speed, without changing the coil, without changing windings, without changing really any circuitry either. It's just a matter of how the inductance happens with inside the coil. So 140 uh, feet of wire is on the coil, like I've said before. We were running at 3,000 RPMs, and, uh, you'll, and you can see clearly the, the bulbs lighting up.